Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us here at LearnBridge Online. I am so happy to welcome Joan Butts from joanbuttsbridge.com, who is uh, going to be playing some hands that she put together for us. And I also wanted to make sure that you guys know uh, Joan is coming to teach four classes on major suit raises in May. So Joan, welcome. Thank you so much for coming by. Hi, Vajia. Hi, everyone. I'm very excited to be doing this because I know that you're all missing your friends and not able to play bridge at your clubs. And Bajir's working with me to be able to do some things online. So I'm excited. I got dressed up and I hope you're excited too. Well, I'm excited to, to, to uh, watch you play along with everyone else. I am gonna turn off my camera, but I will be here for tech support Tech hiccups are a normal thing. We're all experimenting with live streaming now. So if we do run into any trouble, I hope you guys will bear with us. And um, at the end of all of this, Joan, maybe I can look through the YouTube comments and share some of the questions or comments that people leave there. Yeah, that'd be great. I'd love to hear what you're thinking at the end, probably. So um, if you want to type some questions, then Bajir will go through them at the end with you. All right, fantastic. Well, I will uh, see you on the other side. And Joan, holler out if you need any help. I'll be here. Will do. Can I hope everyone can see the first hand. But um, this was a hand I went through and I played some of the random hands, the play online hands on my site. As you know, there are two parts to it, really. There's the online school, which is a big library of lessons, but there's also the fun time of playing hands. So... The very first hand that I saw was this one, which is rather extraordinary. So I thought that I'd collect a few hands for you and go through them and see what you'd do. So I'm going to talk through what I would do on it and why, and I'll sort of ask questions as we go along. So the first hand here is you've got a one, four, one, seven shape. So when I say that, I go from spades, hearts, diamonds, and clubs. You've got one spade, four hearts, only one diamond, and seven clubs. So this is certainly an opening hand. And you've got two aces and a king and a queen, So, and we can add extra for our length in clubs. So we would open one club. And partner bids one spade and it's back to us. Well, we've got only 13 high card points and we've got extra points for the length in clubs. And really, we've got seven of them. So I think our rebid is two clubs. When someone bids what we call an old suit, in other words, a suit that's been heard before, like when we bid two clubs, that's not really even forcing. If partner didn't have a good hand, they could pass. But when they do what they've done here, which is bid two diamonds, that's a new suit, that's absolutely forcing. They might have bid on this hand three diamonds, which might have shown a stronger hand. But anyway, we have to decide now what is the best bid for the hand. We've got a choice. We could bid hearts, but I've got a feeling we should show that seven-card club suit again, and we're in a forcing situation. We've agreed that we're in a forcing situation. Mm, they've bid three diamonds. So what do you think that means? Whenever someone bids and rebids their second suit, they're usually at least five cards of the second suit. So they've probably got at least, we know they'll have at least five spades and five diamonds, maybe six spades and five diamonds. Um, we are getting the feeling that this hand is what we call a misfit. With misfits, it usually doesn't work well to play no trumps. So what can we do? We've got a singleton in each of partner's suits. I think the best bid we can make now is three hearts. Three hearts are sort of saying, look, I've got clubs, clubs and clubs, but I want to tell you that I can't really fit any of your suits. 
they're bidding three no trumps. We don't want to play three no trumps on this hand because three no trumps doesn't work very well with misfits. You can't get from one hand to the other very well. So I think we'll try four clubs. I know we've bid clubs all the time. Woo! They've gone to six clubs, heavens above. Now we have to play it. And now we'll see their hand. Okay, so look at their hand. As we expected, it was six spades, five diamonds. It had the singleton jack of clubs and the singleton king of hearts. It also had a lot of points and we're in slam. Now we need to try and make it. We're concerned about the club suit because we're missing the king and the ten. We've got eight clubs and we hope they're breaking three too, but we are missing two big clubs, important clubs. Well, we've got no choice but to win the king of hearts. And these hands, we've got to be very careful with entries because we can play a spade over to the ace or we can play a diamond back to the king. But there's no reason why we wouldn't touch trumps right now. So let's play the jack of clubs and see what happens. Put the three on it. Ooh, it won the trick. So that means we know the king of clubs is in the east hand and we can't stop east unless they've only got a doubleton, which is unlikely. Um, they'll make their king of clubs, but don't worry about it. Let's cross over to the south hand with a diamond and cash the ace of clubs. Discard, it doesn't really matter what we discard. Okay, so now we know that East started with King 10 and another club. Don't touch trumps anymore. They've got the winning king. Just We'll just let them win it. So we now need to cross over to the spade ace and we need to get rid of these heart losers. So we play the ace of diamonds, discarding a heart. We could try the king of spades, discarding another heart. And now we could trump a diamond to get back to hand. Let's trump it. And at this point, we could happily give up the king of clubs because that's the only trick they're going to make. We'll trump the spade and we can play anything now. If you've got any questions about the bidding or the play, in a minute you'll be able to see all the hands and we can discuss quickly. So, woo, we made 920. When I watched this hand, uh, I saw when I played it on the, on the online game, 550 people had played the hand and I was really thrill to see how many people had reached slam. I didn't think it was a very good slam, but what makes it a good, you know, not a bad six club contract is the fact that you've got the singleton jack of clubs, the singleton king of hearts. So really the hand that is most important is that great big strong north hand. And South just kept talking about clubs this is not a sort of hand, even though you might make no trumps, it's not a sort of hand to play no trumps. You'd have probably been better. I don't think people would be necessarily in slam. I think four spades is fine or five clubs, but we, we made six clubs. And so congratulations to all the people who managed to bid slam on the hand. If you've got any questions, just jot them down and I'm about to go on to the next hand, okay? Here's hand two. So I guess you can all see hand two. This is a much more normal sort of hand. We've got an opening 12 points plus an extra point for the fifth heart. So we'll just open one heart. This was another hand that popped up on the game. They've overcalled a spade, partners raised two, 
and Easter's bid two spades. Well, this is a common situation in competitive bidding. By the way, I am doing four lessons on major suit raises and one lesson will be on this situation when the other side comes in and the bidding becomes competitive. I don't think we've got any reason to bid any more on this hand because when you bid again, you should actually be saying to partner that you've got more information. Well, we haven't got any more information, so we just say pass. And if partner wanted to bid, they could have. But no, we're defending two spades. So what can we do on this hand? Partner's led a heart. Now let's think about that three lead from partner. We know for sure they've got three hearts because they raised hearts. And we've got five. There We see three in dummy. Partner will have three. They might have four, but likely to have three. One thing they won't have is jack 10x. They Because if they had the jack, the 10, and another heart, they would have led the jack. So we're pretty sure that the jack or maybe the 10 will be in declarer's hand. So we win the king of hearts. And it's not a good idea to cash the ace of hearts at this point because we know that partner will have three, there are three in dummy, we've got five, and declarer would have only had two at best. So we don't want to set up that queen of hearts for a discard later. We need to switch. Now, switching to a diamond would be very dangerous because we're looking at king, jack, ten, and two other diamonds. How about we switch to a club? Um, we've got the ace, eight, seven of clubs. And it doesn't hurt if you switch, if you've got the ace, it's a good play in the middle of the hand to actually give to Clara a problem by playing a little club. Okay, partners won the 10 and they return the 10 of hearts. So that confirms that Declara's got the jack. We'll rise with the ace, down comes the jack. So the queen's a winner. Um, we can't do anything about that, but we can take our ace of clubs now. And still, I wouldn't switch to a diamond, and I don't want to switch to a spade because we've got Jack Doubleton. There's no point in switching to a heart, so we might as well play a club and force Declare it a trump. Now they're quickly getting into spades. Yep, they're drawing trumps as we thought they would. We can discard a heart. Now they're trying to see what we've got with the discards. Our hand is useless. And we just have to hope that partner has got something in diamonds. Yep, sure enough, they had the ace. And the Queen of Hearts wins the last trick. So they made 110. Quite a few people, again, had played this hand. And making 110, we might say, well, maybe we should have gone to three hearts. This is a very hard thing to decide because if North which is a very flat, awful looking hand, could hardly be worse. Um, if they bid three hearts, we might fail by one or maybe two. And this could be a good thing, but personally, I think when you've got a flat hand, you've said you've got five hearts, partners said they've got three hearts, really, I think this one is one to be left well alone. So if you've got any other opinions about it, I'd love to hear. Um, send emails or type your questions in and Bajir will have a look at them at the end. So if we're ready, we'll go on to the next hand. Okay, we're on to hand three. I did six hands, but we may not have time to get through six, but still, these were hands that came up on the random hands and it was pretty amazing 
I, I loved playing them and I loved seeing what everybody else had scored. So here's another one where we would open one heart, 12 points, five card heart suit, perfectly normal opening. And again, partner raises to two hearts, but this time ace says double. When the opponents enter the auction, East is saying they've got an opening hand and they're short in hearts and they'd like their partner to bid. It's a takeout double. When someone comes into the auction, it actually gives us more bids and it's good for our side. So don't think that it's messing us up because it doesn't have to. And on this hand, we would pass. We've said our bid. We don't have anything else to say. We don't particularly want to go to game. We haven't got an extra heart where we could bid three hearts. We don't have a game try to tell partner we'd like to go to game. If we had a really strong hand, we would say redouble. And that would be telling partner that either the opponents are going to get into trouble or we should be in game. So I think we'll just pass and see what happens. Okay, they've bid two spades and we've got queen, nine, seven of spades. I think we just leave this auction alone. See how we go. Partner, as expected, leads a heart. Now let's look at the dummy. It was a good double because they're short in hearts and they've got the other suits. Whether or not our left-hand opponent has got a good hand, I don't think there's much room for them to have a good hand. So we win the king of hearts. And what to switch to? It might work to switch to a diamond. It certainly wouldn't work to switch to a spade. And we could play another heart and we know that they'll trump. So I think, strangely enough, even though you're looking at strong clubs, you could switch to the nine of clubs. It might work. Ah, obviously Declare has got the ace of clubs. We're just following suit with trumps. Ooh, partners won the jack. That's looking good. So we'll pl play a little club and win the queen of spades. Ooh, partner had the king. Ah, now they're playing a heart. Rise with the ace of hearts. And we could at this point switch to diamonds, just to be sure. Another club. Right, so we beat the hand and have a look at the terrible situation that West would have been put in when they had to make a bid. We opened a heart and it went two hearts. The next hand said double. We passed and look at the West hand. I'd like to know what you think of the West hand and what you would bid. Partners made a takeout double. What do you think is the best bid on this hand? Because your longest suit is our suit. You've got four hearts and whew, you can't certainly can't bid that. The other thing that doesn't work is if you bid no trumps. Let's say it went one heart, two hearts, double, and you bid two no trumps. You've only got an ace and a jack. It won't work well to be in no trumps on a hand like this. So you had to close your eyes and hope that you didn't get into too much trouble and bid two spades. Yes, I know you've only got three spades, but none of the alternatives were at all attractive, were they? Okay, on to the next hand. I'll just do, I'll actually do hand five now because I'd like you to have a bit of excitement. Ooh, look at this hand. Is everyone adding up their points? 
This hand came up as well on the random hands. I was very excited to have it. So let's add up our points. When people have got big hands like this, you can usually tell they become very quiet at the real life bridge table. And even when you're playing online, sometimes they're very slow to bid because they're adding up all their points. So how many points did you get here? I count to 23. Is that what you got as well? A balance 23 count. So what do we do on this hand? Most people play that to open two no trumps is between 20 and 21 or 22. So we're too big for that. The only answer is to open two clubs. And that is most people's game force. It says, I've got some sort of enormous hand and I want you, partner, oh, look what's happened. I want you, partner, to tell me what you've got. Well, it went three diamonds from north. What this means in most bidding languages is that north has a positive. What's a positive? Mostly it means you've got a very good suit, at least five cards in diamonds, and you would have the top two diamonds. So you can expect that partner will have a good hand and at least the ace king of diamonds. So they'll probably have something else too, another honour. Now, what are we going to do? We've got four beautiful diamonds to the queen and we've got a partner who has said, I've got a great hand with at least five diamonds. Well, my vote is just to do Blackwood, which is for no trumps. Ask about partner's aces. We could make various other bids, but this is such a strong hand. So I'm going to go straight to Forno Trumps and see what happens. I hope the robots know what I'm talking about. Five hearts. Okay, so I've organised that this particular Blackwood that we're playing, I'm not sure if everyone knows this, but it's in my online school. It's called Roman Keycard Blackwood. And it's the best Blackwood to play because it gives you more information. So if anyone wants to check it up, have a look at the lesson in my online school. What partner has said, and we know that diamonds are trumps, partner has said they've got two key cards and that's about it. But what else do they need? They've told us they've got the ace and the king of diamonds and we know they've got a long diamond suit. Now, we're going to be very daring today because this will be the last hand we'll try. And I would like to bid, we could check five no trumps. And I don't know how you play this, but if someone goes five no trumps after they've got the answer to Blackwood, four no trumps, five no trumps is saying, I want to know about kings and I can promise you, partner, that we've got all the first round controls. So I've we've got the ace of spades, ace of hearts, ace of clubs, and we've got the queen of diamonds. And we just heard from partner that they had the ace and king of diamonds. So heavens above, we've got an awful lot on this. So let's try five no trumps. And partners bid six spades. There is a very, I love it, a particular way of answering kings. And we already knew that they would have the king of diamonds because of their positive bid. What they're saying now, this is called specific kings. They've told us we, they've got the king of spades. So I want us to be very brave today and bid seven diamonds. So let's have a look. Sure enough, they had what we thought they'd have. They had beautiful diamonds and the ace king, and they also had the king of spades. Now we've got to make 13 tricks, quite nerve wracking. We probably could have also bid seven no trumps if we were getting very, you know, trying to get a really big score. So we've won the ace of hearts. The only loser, I can't even see any losers because on the king of hearts, because we had a singleton, we can actually discard that losing club. And we've got all the top spades. 
We've just got to now look at trumps and hope that we can draw trumps. So we had nine trumps and, oh, hooray, the trumps have broken 2-2. Two, two. We've drawn all the trumps and now we are going to make seven. So we're sure the trumps are out. Let's play spades. Queen of spades and a spade over to the king. And we can play the jack of spades, pitching a club. It doesn't really matter. We've got all the rest of the tricks now. We can play a club over to the ace and the king of clubs. And the king of hearts on which we discard the losing club. Then we've only got trumps in the north hand. So nobody's got any trumps. So we'll play the king of diamonds. And the nine of diamonds. And whoopee, we made it. We were in seven. People don't often bid seven. And when I was looking at the scores after I'd played it, I was really impressed that everybody bid six. Nobody missed slam. But at the time I played it, no one had bid seven. So if you really used your bidding tools wisely, you could get to seven diamonds or even seven no trumps. So, Bajir, I think that they've had to listen to me long enough today. So... I would like to say that for gold members, if you'd like to play six hands, which I selected, you could go in and soon we'll have the live stream and you'll be able to replay the hands if you want to. And for everybody else, um, I'd like to mention that my online school of bridge, I'm offering a month free at the moment as a gold member. So go in and have a look. Um, but Bajir is putting together a live stream so that everybody can go through these hands. And, and again, I just want to say, if you've got any questions, we might be able to take some now. Otherwise, I'll answer them all for you. So, Bajir, are you there? I sure am. Can you hear me oh, okay? Thank goodness. Yeah, I can hear you perfectly. And I'm going to go out of that hand and out of my online. Is that okay? Absolutely. Yeah. So we have a few. First, uh, a big thank you to everyone who joined us. It's um, it's 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 really nice seeing so many people joining from all over the world. Uh, here's a question from Ian. Please explain more why three diamonds in the last hand is positive, saying long suit. Oh, okay. and two. Sure, why not sure. long suit in king, queen, jack, ten, seven, and say four? Good sure. question, Ian. Okay. Many times when partner opens a game force, it's a very good idea to bid two diamonds, which is a negative. If you do choose a positive, it's because you've got a suit like that one we saw, which has at least two of the top three honours or three of the top five honours. And the idea is this. If partner has opened two clubs, they're only going to have about three losers. And your job as responder is to tell them that you can cover some of those losers. And if you give a positive, you're virtually saying to partner, let's go to slam because you've got a really good suit. So as soon as you bid three diamonds rather than the negative of two diamonds, partner, we knew that you'd have at least ace king and three other diamonds, could have even had six diamonds. And negatives are usually less than an ace and a king and a positive is always a very good suit more than an ace and a king does that answer your question i think so ian uh let us know if you have a follow-up about that but uh thank you joan and for anyone else um who has questions either now or watching the replay uh we'll have uh places on both of our websites where you can ask questions